Hello and welcome back. And that's right, today we're going to return to the subject of the Zimmer Blade from Ice Whale. And today we are going to be looking at Plex Media Server Performance. Uh, around about a week ago, at least at the time of recording, I made live my review of the Zimmer Blade. And in all of the comments now, I would say one of the more recurring subjects was to do with its performance as a nice, compact, easy to deploy Plex Media Server device. So even when I went through my written review, I covered some of the stuff to do with the app applications and services that are supported on this device but I didn't really go into enough detail on Plex and that's what today's video is much like my other videos centered around the performance of different NAS servers for Plex Media Server today we are looking at 4k 1080p files and we're even going to do a little bit of 8k at one point and we're going to be seeing how the Zimmer Blade contends with this now there's a few things we have to kind of go on about very early uh, out all the doors out the bat right now I am running you know a handful of applications here but I would say one of the most useful applications is going to be this one net data now net data as we open it up here it's a, low, a large overarching uh, tool to monitor the health of your systems. It runs as a docker and we're going to be utilizing this to look at more specifically than anything else one very specific area and that is to do with the temperature of the CPU throughout the course of these tests. We're running a slightly older generation CPU, the N3450 inside the Zimmer Blade. And although it does have integrated graphics, there are going to be some elements of transcoding and conversions where we think this CPU may hit a bit of a wall. We are still talking about, once again, a $64 server here. So again it's understandable that there are going to be slight compromises there but we're going to be returning to this page periodically to check on the health of that cpu throughout the course of this now a number of you may also want to highlight the fact that i just mentioned there to do, uh, the subject of conversions that's right a file that's been changed from its original format while well, you do that it could be for several reasons number one it could be that the file you're utilizing is an hevc file or highly efficient video codec otherwise known as h.264 and your client device that you're accessing it with, your mobile phone, your laptop, your tablet, your TV, may not support HEVC. And therefore, the system, the NAS in this case, will have to reshape that file to be better suited to the destination. The same goes that maybe you are playing some hench 200 megabits per second 4K file but you only want to watch this particular episode of Downton Abbey on the train uh, while you're making your way um, into railing through Europe. And ultimately, you are happy to use a lower quality version on your smaller handset, maybe an old iPhone. Therefore, relying on the system to change the shape and format of these files, and that I haven't even got into audio formats and supported uh, video co uh, um, compression techniques, and Codex, sorry, I've got a horrendous cold today, I do apologise. Um, there's so many reasons why a person might change the shape of a file. So we're going to be looking at native playback, but of course we are also going to be looking at how the file plays when it needs to be changed. Apologies for the slight break in recording there. I just realized we had an update there on Plex. And again, I'll apply it to these other NASs later on. But I wanted to make sure we were using the latest version of Plex Media Server on the Zimmer Blade here. But so let's crack straight on. Uh, the files we're going to be utilizing today are the same files we always use. Uh, these are located, as you can see here, on the core internal system. You can see them there. We've got some 4K files we're going to be dealing with there. We've got some 8K files that we're going to be dealing with there. And all the way through to some standard Plex Media Server files there, we've got our jellyfish test files there along with some standard files as well um, and again we've already done the resequencing there we're not using uh, the uh, plex tv tuner there we're using imdb for the metadata scraping hence why some of those thumbnails haven't arrived but that's not too much of a problem but for now let's go straight into some films here and again do take note that we are utilizing the Zimmer Blade uh, Plex Media Server one here, not the DS920 up here. We're definitely using this one in the middle, but let's crack on straight into the matrix here. We're playing this in its an original quality here in 720p, and it's 0 0.7 megabits per second frame rate there. And again, we can skip back and forth real easy. Now on the right hand side of the screen there you're going to see a slight bump when we selected that file for playback. One of the things I will highlight while we're going through all of this is as we make our way along and checking all of these different uh, file formats, at the bottom here you're going to see the original quality. You're also going to see an audio stream quality here and sometimes that will differ. Sometimes that is going to necessitate uh, a change into a different format and that's when we're going to be testing how the system deals with conversions. Uh, another thing we will also highlight 
highlights you can see here the light orange here at the bottom of the screen that light orange represents normal organic playback and the dark orange represents buffering and setting up the file for playback often when the system does not have the horsepower or the resources to get the job done it can't get the file lined up quicker than organic playback and that is considered a fail during these plex tests there'll be a few other different kinds of failure that i'll talk about later on but i'll say for now that although we can flick through this file with no delay whatsoever bearing in mind we are connecting via the network so i would expect no less i will say i'm slightly troubled by that slight bump there on the right hand side of the screen the reason being the cpu has integrated graphics it's not the newest cpu so if we look up the in 30 uh, CPU here you can see the CPU has integrated graphics but that integrated graphics even that CPU has been discontinued rolling out in 2016 it has since seen an end of service update again this is a very affordable system it makes a lot of sense to stay within that price point but when it comes to the GPU specifications until you actually get in hold of the burst mode that's got a low integrated graphics quantity there once again for this price point we're not going to give it too much criticism for that but when it comes to when we're dealing with a lot of the uh, uh conversions and transcoding and stuff that's when that integrated graphics is going to be required so for now let's make our way now into little shop of horrors so we'll go back into the film select little shop of horrors this is a 1080p file twice the megabits per second bit right there it should open it up there as you can see it's 1.9 megabits per second 1080p hd file again flick along absolutely fine playing there natively no delays see a slight bump there on the right hand side of the screen one thing i will add during the course of this as well is the subject of the bit rate megabit per second this ultimately is the amount of data that is pressed into every single second and the higher the resolution you tend to find particularly um, with uh, more modern tvs that bit rate does increase now with modern blu-ray and um, kind of portable media improving the amount of data that can be compressed alongside those compression techniques we've already discussed earlier in h.264 and h.265 the result is this number gets higher and the larger this number is the more data that needs to be handled by the system and in particular the cpu and that integrated graphics so another thing we're going to be looking at through the course of these tests is just what is the level before this cpu falls apart if i had to have a guess I think this CPU is going to struggle once we're looking at a bit rate of around 30 to maybe 40 megabits per second, but we will be testing larger than that. So if we go for a conversion here with this 1080p file, we're going to knock this down to a 720p file. We've increased a bit rate, but we've now gone down to 720p. Very quick, very instant, no issues. And now a more troubling conversion is going to be going down to 480p. The 480p here conversion, as you can see, ever so slight delay this time and as you can see the file hasn't lined up too quickly we're waiting what are we up to about four seconds delay there and look at that cpu increase there on the right hand side of the screen that cpu has now rose to around 92 percent usage with plex making up 89 percent at the same time we look at the cpu temperature and that has increased quite rapidly now i talked about this in my review the layout of the components on this device with the cpu on the base of this system that cpu is covered by uh, a heat sink that makes up the base of the system the entire base panel of this is effectively a large heatsink and the result is with no active cooling system right now i'm running this system live and on the table next to uh, a hard drive cage that's not utilizing but if you've got this in a closed system that kind of temperature although by no means a throttling temperature i would still argue is worthy of wondering about whether you should perhaps look into some active cooling for this in a smaller casing but nevertheless we'll come out of that file and now we're going to make our way into the jellyfish files now the jellyfish files uh, these are mostly in 1080p hd but some of them are in 4k but 4k we might move on to some other ones later now We've already looked at 1080p file in H.264 already at 3 megabits per second, so let's jump ahead, make our way to a 10 megabits per second file here. We're just going to play this one. Again, this is H.264, which is played natively, so you don't have to worry about support of certain compression techniques, um, uh, compression uh, licensing on your client device. And again, whether it is you're watching this on a P PlayStation 3, 4, 5, Xbox One, 360, what is that naming convention all about? Um, 
this should be absolutely fine to play and as you can see not really any concerns tiny bumps we've got over that enormous jump we saw earlier uh, committing that conversion technique but this time we're going to play the same 10 megabit file but this time we're going to play an hevc version this version of the file requires that additional codec and if we open it up there we're able to play it natively here but it's going to be slightly heftier now later on we are going to be playing hevc files that require conversion so for example if we convert this file this time in the way that uh, if your device does not support hevc once again look at that big spike on the right hand side of the screen now this isn't unusual it really isn't just to put what we're seeing here into perspective because as you can see it will eventually play that file but that cpu is just showing this is where the age of that cpu particularly when it comes to a, a more um, prosumer uh, plex media server will show its colors a little bit more now to put that into a little bit of perspective the reason we've got the 920 up here is the, uh, the ds920 runs on a celeron it's by no means the newest intel celeron it runs on a j um, 4125 CPU circa 2019 2020 but if we find that exact same file here so again this is that same file but this time we're playing it from the DS920 plus and we'll play that there we're gonna see that same delay we'll make our way into the DS920 here open up its own uh, dashboard as you can see here on the right hand side and we're playing indirect and this is one that requires conversion as you can see and if we go into the, the CPU here, that CPU, it's still working and it's still having to convert that file. But that CPU has better integrated graphics and that CPU also had a better base level hardware as well. So this is what I mean about the difference between an older and newer gen CPU and the performance of those integrated graphics there. You just have a little bit more of a tailored, updated integrated graphics there. And it's just this device, as mentioned, tremendously affordable at that price point again at $64 entry and I stand by the high scores we've given it as you can see based on build quality hardware performance etc but there is no denying that when you're paying that lower price you are still paying for a hardware equivalent of that value now making our way back into um, the testing here let's let's go back into the Zimmer blade um, settings here and now we'll scale things up because we now know that when it comes to playing files that require transcoding we're going to need a little bit of extra oomph something this system may not have for us but now let's look at the 30 megabits per second so this is not only three times the size of that big file this is 30 times uh, the size of the first files we tested and again this is an hevc file there so playing natively absolutely fine we can skip ahead we're good and as long as you've got support of hevc on your intended device or you've got support and are happy that you want the 1080p file you're going to be absolutely laughing now let's move things up we're going to go from 30 to 100 megabits per second bitrate that's 100 megabits per second of data we're sticking with h.264 for now we'll move into that one and this is where the difference between the file format compression technique and all of that stuff meets the bit rate because the bit rate as you can see that dark orange in every other test we've done is immediately just filled up this bar very early doors but this time there's so much data being handled by that cpu that you can see that native playback is closing in on the comp uh, on the buffering of that file now this is a 30 second file so luckily it can't outpace it but imagine that was a 90 minute movie which unfortunately youtube will probably stop me monetizing this video anyway because of the matrix and little shop of horrors but nevertheless if you were running a larger file i'm not certain it wouldn't have a stutter and as you can see we saw quite a significant spike there during the course of that testing which brings us to the 4k testing i'm sorry i'm slightly out of breath as i say a little bit under the weather sorry about having a cold um but now we're going to move into the 4k files now this is a 4k 120 megabits per second 4k ultra hd file again we're playing it natively we're not worrying about transcoding but as you can see it has got as far as four to five seconds and this is normally make or break in any file when you see a file be attempted to play and then the system bottles out now we have seen this on many many different nas systems this is not unusual and this simply means that the file is just 
too much for this CPU and this integrated graphics to handle and it goes into a stall and it will eventually kick us out of this file as it attempts to play that file. So what we're going to try and do this time is we're going to go ahead and try to transcode that file down. So if we convert that file it will narrow it down but chances are if it does play it will hit significant buffer issues. Again this is still a great uh, Plex Media server to play native files and it can play some 4K, something you're going to see later on in the video. But look at that significant spike we're seeing here on the right hand side. This spike of the CPU having to work tremendously hard to gear up this file because we've reached three seconds and it will go a little further. But once it gets to about five or six seconds, it will allow the, oh, it's not even going to allow the file to play. And as you can see, that CPU just buckled under the pressure. And I think ultimately what that's telling us is at least as far as the jellyfish files go, we cannot go further. If we try to play these files, if it can't play the 120 megabits per second H.264, clearly that bit rate is the issue. Why do I not, why do I think that? Well, we make our way now into the 4K trailers. The 4K trailers, we're gonna go for our first one here. This is a 4K file, and we're gonna go ahead and play that. And this is a 4K file, which as you can see, this is playing fine. This can play 4K. And it's also worth highlighting that 12 megabits per second is actually pretty darn hench. A lot of files, when you are looking at anything greater than about 10 megabits per second, that's pretty bespoke. Most of the files that you buy, you know, whether you do a downloaded version of a file online, you've bought Avengers Endgame in whatever format you want, or you've gone elsewhere to find your files, anything greater than 10 megabits is pretty hard going to find. As you can see, Playback and buffering is still pretty darn close there at the bottom right of the screen. Unfortunately, I'm not on my laptop to do uh, an easy zoom, but as you can see, it's playing it, and the CPU isn't struggling too much, but largely this is down to playing that native file, but a bit rate that is manageable. To put that into perspective, now we're going to try this file. This is 60 megabits per second, H.265, and once we play this one, it's had to convert that file. It's been forced, its hand is forced, and you're going to see that CPU do another inevitable spike. And as good as it is that this file is going to eventually try to play, it's had to already buckle it down to 30 megabits down from that 60 megabits per second the file plays at, and it's an 8-bit HDR, but it simply is going to struggle. And even when the file does play, if it does play as it does, there is absolutely no way this file is going to have the buffering outplace organic native playback and we're about to hit a wall any second now and boom we're going to see the orange ring of failure unfortunately so we'll come out of that one we'll let the cpu go back down to its lower thread and we go and check the cpu temperature while we're doing this and as you can see throughout the course of our testing every time we've run one of those conversions, we've seen the CPU temperature spike up to about 74 to 75 degrees there, peaking at one point at 76. Again, these are not game over temperatures. They're really, really not. But at the same time, this is not really active use we're doing here. And if you had a lot of users accessing at the same time, this is the sort of number where I would start maybe recommending to use to look at active cooling on wherever they're mounting that Zimmer blade, or at the very least, having some sort of base level fan built in to the system. Again, this is not mission critical, this isn't end game sort of temperatures here, but nevertheless, this is the sort of temperatures where if it was a consistent number, I would recommend active cooling here. So we come out of this one, and if we move away from 60 megabits per second, we've now got a 30 megabits per second, beauty of Taiwan. We open it up, it's had to go directly into a conversion, and again, sometimes this can be related to the audio stream, but nevertheless, we're seeing the system has had to downgrade that because it's just over that crossing line. And once again, we're seeing that CPU have to work pretty darn hard. Now, had we been using a device that supports HEVC 8-bit um, HDR format, this would probably be able to play natively using, say, the Plex Media Server application on your mobile phone or whatever. But I can't show that here, and I'm sure one of you has said it something in the comments along the line of why you're using the web browser. 
simply because the web browser presents the best way to convert files to create artificial access and we need to be able to test different access scenarios going down as low as 480p or even going higher so the web browser presents us the ability to do so had i used and it's about to do orange ring of failure here any second there it is had we used a client application, you know, such as my Amazon Fire TV or mobile videos, then, you know, maybe that file would have played a little bit better. But unfortunately, we have to cover this scenario for everyone. Uh, native playback should be fine, though. So if we look at the Wonder Woman file here, 16 megabit, this should play absolutely fine. We're looking at 16 megabits per second, 4K. It's a massive file. It's running that 4K resolution, uh, not 4K, 4,000 pixel by 17, otherwise known as 4K, and it plays fine. So as I say, as far as native playback goes, the Zimmer Blade will do pretty darn well. But there's no denying, particularly if you're going to have multiple users accessing 4K at the same time, Look at that spike there. We still saw that spike, nevertheless, with native playback. So if you had two users accessing it, that CPU utilization by Plex is going to spike. And once again, we're seeing that temperature going up as well. So we come out of that one. And again, we've got loads of files here. And I think we're getting a good understanding of what the capabilities are with regards to bitrate. For example, here is an H.264 file at 32 megabits per second and if we actually we're going to go for the batman trailer because that rise of skywalker file i i feel is broken but this is an h.264 8 bit hdr 32 megabits per second so in theory this should play natively and absolutely fine as we go up to that 30 megabits per second bit rate it's still a hefty bit rate and as i predicted at the beginning of the video i think the bit rate uh, for this file uh, the, for this system maximum is going to be between 30 and 40 megabits per second before the system struggles with the files but still nonetheless although we're not seeing buffering massively outpace playback we're still seeing pretty darn good numbers there although once again we're seeing that spike so for those doing simultaneous 4k files uh, playback natively via different client devices you may want to bear that in mind so as we wrap things up on this file, do you know what? We're going to do a couple more files. We're going to go to Avengers Endgame here, which is a 40 megabits per second file. And while it does that in the background, as you can see, it's able to natively play back that file. We're going to see that inevitable spike. The last thing I want to do in this video is just talk about 8K. And I want to talk about playing back 8K files. Because although we're going to test these, I have every prediction in the world that this is not going to work. Why is that? Well, as we can see that the Avengers at 40 megabits per second or even 49 megabits per second is playing absolutely fine, thereby, you know, slightly undermining my prediction on this. When we look at 8K files, 8K files, one, are almost always in HEVC. The reason being that they are just too big for H.264 to be good enough. Now, we're looking at new compression techniques that are open source based and therefore everyone can use them rolling out in the next few years, which will hopefully remove the stranglehold of H.264 and HEVC in coming years when it comes to licensing. But for now, when we look at these ones here, every single one of these is going to require some form of compression. So for example, if we look at this one, this is an AK Patagonia, and we go for that one there, we open it up, and of course it goes straight into compression, uh, con uh, conversion. And once again, as we've learned already, this CPU, when it comes to conversions, it's integrated graphics, although useful, are still not you know up to date with more modern cpus in the market and although this will try to play files which we can see it doing right now i'm not convinced it's going to completely excel at this again 64 dollars what do you want jam on it but still nonetheless there's no denying that this cpu is really going to struggle with that case so in terms of future proofing media 64 dollars you should not be expecting that to buy an 8k media server and if you did that's madness i've only ever in all my years of plex media server nas testing uh conventionally at least at the desktop form i've only found about four or five different nases that comfortably play 8k in plex due to reasons of compression technique but also the sheer scale of these files again to put that into perspective that file that we just tried to play patagonia if we right click that and find out uh, more information about it 
unfortunately we can't seem to there we go patagonia that was a 605 megabyte per second file again not in itself huge but once you break down that file is about 30 seconds long or oh, so I want to say it's not 30 seconds, that's 4 minutes 31, that's actually surprisingly reasonable, um, countering myself there slightly, but when we look at some of those heftier files, when we're looking at, for example, the Jellyfish files, Plex Media Server, Jellyfish files, and we go to the biggest file that we have there, which is the 400 megabits per second file at 30 seconds, that's 1.4 gig for 30 seconds. The moral of the story is, this is still, in my opinion, one of the best kind of low price value options out there for those that want their own home lab plex media server that's really easy to set up on a tight budget and you can run this system if you choose off a usb drive indeed when i was getting ready for my plex media server testing and i was running off of the internal storage of all of my files prior to that i planned to use an external ssd to run a lot of this and it was an ssd connected over usb in the end i decided not to because i felt like that undermined the results but nonetheless even if you don't want to use connected hard drives it doesn't matter because you can run plex off a usb on this device so if all of your multimedia already exists as a usb drive right now anyway then you can go ahead and spend $64 to connect this to your USB drive and then you've got yourself a Plex Media server with just a USB and this running off USB power as well. So don't let the failure of some of the conversions and transcoding in this video undermine that this is still a great system as an entry level Plex Media server for both 1080p and 4K. If you're going to use native files, it's still a great choice overall. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Again, links in the description to both the article and the video. And we've got a before you buy coming up on this device very, very soon. So do check that out. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching. Links in the description to everything I've discussed today and other Plex Media Server videos. Check those out. But apart from that, have a great week and I'll see you next time.